or an astronaut. Talk with an astronaut. Question of the week: What is life like for an astronaut? Genre: An expository text can tell about real people and events. In this interview, notice how the subject gives thoughtful answers about what it's like to be an astronaut. Question: What are your Hispanic roots? Did you speak Spanish at home when you were growing up? Answer: My Hispanic roots come from my father's side. His parents were Mexican, but my father was born in this country. He was one of twelve children. My father grew up speaking both Spanish and English, but unfortunately, he didn't speak Spanish with us at home. When I was growing up, my father believed, as many people did at the time, that there was a prejudice against people speaking their native language. It's really too bad, and I'm glad that things have changed in recent years. Question: Does your being Hispanic American make you feel more pressure and more pride about your accomplishments? Do you have that in mind when you think of how well you've done in life? Answer: I don't believe that being Hispanic American puts any additional pressure on me. I seem to put enough pressure on myself as it is. As for my accomplishments, being an astronaut has given me the opportunity to speak to children all over, including children with the same background as myself. I think that it's important for children to have a role model to see what they can grow up to be. It's important they know that if they work hard, they can be and accomplish whatever they want. I am proud to be an example of that. Elena Choa is the first Hispanic American woman to fly in space. She is also an inventor of optical and robotic devices. She was interviewed by fifth grade students. Question. Who do you think was the most influential person in your life? Answer: My mother influenced me the most. When I was a year old, she started college. She had to raise five children primarily on her own, and so she couldn't take more than one class each semester. She didn't graduate until 22 years later, but she did finish. Her primary focus was the enjoyment of learning. That's what I got from her example. Question. What were you interested in when you were in fifth grade? Answer: When I was in the fifth grade, I think I wanted to be president. I got over that by the time I was in the sixth grade. I didn't think that I would be an astronaut, but you never know how your interests will change. That's why it's important never to shut down your options. In college, I changed my major five times. I started college interested in music and business, and graduated with a degree in physics. I didn't actually pursue becoming an astronaut until graduate school, when I learned about the kinds of skills NASA was looking for in potential astronauts. Question: Why did you want to go into space? Answer: I can't imagine not wanting to go into space, but I never considered being an astronaut as an option because when I was growing up, there were no female astronauts. It wasn't until the first six female astronauts were selected in 1978 that women could even think of it as a possible career path. Question: What is it like to operate a robot arm in space? Answer: I have worked the robot arm on all three of my space missions, and I really love it. It's challenging to do, but lots of fun. On my last mission to the space station, I worked with the help of cameras and monitors because we were docked in a way that prevented me from seeing the robot arm. This made things more difficult. But then again, everything I've done on actual missions in space has always been easier than when I first tried it during training. Question: What is NASA training like? Answer: Everything is always harder to do in training. In training. We prepare for anything that could happen on a space mission, anything that could go wrong. In training, things keep breaking, problems have to be solved. Nothing has ever gone wrong on any of my missions, and our training helps us make sure that nothing will. Each mission has its own specific purpose. For my last mission, we trained for nine months before the actual flight. I started my formal NASA training in 1990. During that period, I spent about half of the time in training. The other half I spent performing other duties.
I was in training for three years before my first mission, which isn't that long of a wait. Some astronauts have waited ten, even sixteen years before they finally go into space. Question: What is it like to float in zero gravity? Answer: Weightlessness is the fun part of the mission. There is really nothing to compare it to on Earth. I guess the closest thing would be swimming or scuba diving. It's a similar freedom of movement. What is odd is that weightlessness seems more natural. You don't have the same kinds of sensations in space as you do in the water. Question: How do you sleep on the space shuttle? Does everyone sleep at the same time, or do you take turns? Do you have weird dreams because you're sleeping in space? Answer: On my first two missions, we slept in two shifts. We had sleeping compartments that looked like coffins. On my last mission, we slept in a single shift. Instead of the sleeping compartments, we slept in what can best be described as a sleeping bag with hooks. You would find a place to hook onto and float in. As for my dreaming, it isn't that different in space. I tend to dream a lot, whether I'm in space or at home on Earth. I have floating dreams on Earth and non-floating dreams on a mission in space. Question: What does Earth look like from space? Answer: That's a really hard question. You have to remember that the shuttle is moving at five miles a second, so the Earth looks very different depending on where you are in space in relation to the position above Earth and what time of day it is. I have to say, though, Earth looks very much like I expected it to look. The IMAX films are pretty close to what Earth really looks like from space. The main difference is that the colors are much more vivid when you're in space. Question: How do you eat in space? Do you have to eat food out of a toothpaste tube? Does the food taste good? Answer: Astronauts haven't eaten food out of tubes for over 20 years. Most of the food now is freeze dried. All we do is add hot water. We eat a variety of foods, including nuts, granola. Cookies, dried fruit, tortillas. We have drinks that we add water to as well. Question: Is it hard being an astronaut and a mother? Do you worry about going into space now that you're a mother? How does your son feel about your going into space? Answer. I think it's hard being anything and a mother. Both are full-time jobs, and you have to work very hard at both to do a good job. Personally, I find both jobs wonderful. It is hard to be separated from my husband and son when I go on a mission, and I miss them a great deal. But lots of people have to be away from their families because of their jobs. Right now, my son is only 18 months old, so the last time I went into space, he didn't really know what was going on. I think it will be much harder the next time. Since he will understand more. Question: Can you talk to your family from space? Answer: Yes, thanks to email. When I am in space, my husband and I are able to communicate every day, which is very nice. And on missions lasting more than ten days, we are allowed to visit with each other by having a video conference from space. Question: What is the scariest thing that ever happened to you in space? Answer: There's never really been anything for me to be scared of because nothing has ever gone wrong on any of my missions. For me, going into space is very exciting, not scary. The riskiest part of the flight is the launch because it's the phase of the flight when things are most likely to go wrong. But like I said, there have never been problems on my missions, and besides, we are trained to handle any problems that might come along. Question: Do you think communication with extraterrestrials is possible? Do you think there are other life forms out there? Answer: I'm not really sure if communication is possible right now with the technology we have today. Given the number of stars that have been discovered in the last couple of years, it isn't inconceivable that life exists on other planets.
though it is important to differentiate between life that is single-celled and life forms that are intelligent and capable of communication. Question. I love math and I want to become an astronaut. What can I start to do to prepare myself? Answer. It's good that you love math because in order to be an astronaut, a college degree in math or a technical science is very important to have. Being an astronaut isn't just the science, though. An astronaut must be both a team player and a leader as well. You should get involved in activities where you work closely with other people, because working closely with other people is an essential part of being an astronaut. Meet the author, Ellen Ochoa. Ellen Ochoa grew up in La Mesa, California. She received a degree in physics from San Diego State University and a Ph.D. from Stanford University. Some of her professors discouraged women from going into math and science, but she knew she could succeed. At Stanford, Dr. Ochoa focused on the area where she would make her name, optical information systems. She developed ways for computers to see objects and analyze them. In 1987, she applied to the NASA astronaut program, but was rejected. Rather than letting this get her down, Dr. Ochoa got her pilot's license. In 1990, NASA accepted her application. In 1993, Dr. Ochoa became the first Hispanic woman to enter outer space. In four missions in space, she has researched issues such as the effect of the sun on Earth's atmosphere and has visited the International Space Station. Dr. Ochoa lives with her husband and their two children. In her spare time, she flies planes, plays volleyball, and goes bicycling. An accomplished flutist, she has even played her flute in space. Here are other books about exploring space. Space Station Science Life in Freefall by Marianne J. Dyson To Space and Back by Sally Ride